Good morning, fellow pilgrims here from Ochebrero. Today we are going to Tria Castella. That will be about 20 kilometers. But take a look at this beautiful view. I've just had a nice coffee with freshly squeezed orange juice here. These orange juice squeezing machines are the best. I would love to have a machine like this at home. Now I have to make some decisions right at the start. Do I want to go for the complementario or the principal? Hmm. I think I'll flip a coin. 160 kilometers to Santiago de Compostela. Well, I don't have much more to say. The accommodation was excellent. Only the dormitory was full to the rafters and it was hot. It was really hot inside, but I still slept quite well. Hey, I'm taking the upper route. The complementario, I'm going to take the upper path now because there's definitely a better view. See you on the way. Thanks for watching. See you later. not disappointed. Many climbs reward you with wonderful views. In these moments, I think about the fact that I will probably be walking alone for quite some time. But as is always the case, someone approaches me at these moments. Somehow, I think he might just walk past, but he doesn't. He stops next to me and takes photos, just like me. He even looks for the same subjects. Then I look to the side and look at him and he looks at me too. He's carrying a drone just like me. He has a mobile phone camera and he has a small camera with him. The guy is equipped as if he wanted to make a Camino film, just like me. Let me introduce you, Carlos from Cadiz. So much for walking alone. Forget it. In just a few moments, we'll be chatting about life, age, jobs, girlfriends, and so on. Oh yeah, a lot of blisters. Camino. And Carlos will become an integral part of our Camino family. We only lose sight of each other a little shortly before Santiago, but we continue to chat on our smartphones. He also wants to make a film about his journey, which, like mine, will take him to Finisterra. Then we meet two French people. I had to laugh when Carlos said that people are no longer capable of relationships these days. Friends in their 30s are all in love and about to get married. All the men he knows who are over 40 have all been left by their wives and are wandering around disorientated, like salmon shortly after spawning. It's a funny picture. But somehow there's something to it, I say. Hey, and if we're both on a cinematic mission here, we might as well film each other, right? Ah, that's... You stay there? Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, what do I take now? I'm taking the principal, not the complementario, because I already took the complementario earlier, and one complementario a day is enough. 
You have to get your principles right. Oh, I see a sign. 150 kilometers to Santiago. Well then, let's go for it. Or has anyone other plans? Hello, good morning, youngs. Hello, good morning, children. I'm in Galicia and it's only 150 kilometers to Santiago. Let me show you what it looks like here. And I've just been walking with someone for a while. His name is Carlos and he comes from Cadiz in Spain. But he lives in Valencia and I had a nice chat with him and he has a lot of cameras with him. He has a camera here. He also has a drone with him. And he's also making a little film about his hike. I'm traveling in Galicia and you can tell the difference in the way the houses are built. Some of them are made of different stones. They all use different stones here. That's crazy. These are not the stones that are used to build houses elsewhere. No, no. These are very special stones. No. I wanted to tell you another anecdote from yesterday. I don't know if I've already told it, but it was so funny. When I arrived and this very robust lady said, kitchen is closed. The kitchen won't open for another 30 minutes. There I was indecisively rushing around, looking at a few things, and suddenly this tomboyish woman grabs me by the shoulder and says, Chico, come with me here, have a seat here. And then she puts a beer in front of me and says, you're going to have a beer first, Chico. Yes, that was strict, but also very warm. That was irgendwie herzlich, aber sehr, sehr schön. <laughs> Bravo. They can do panorama, the Spaniards. You can't complain. You can watch it and never get tired of it. And things are green here, aren't they? It's not just the landscape and architecture that change in Galicia. In fact, everything changes again. The pilgrimage deepens. I feel it during the day, I feel it at night. I've had a lot of interesting dreams in my life. I'm quite good at having lucid dreams at will, etc. But the dreams I'm having here are of a quality that I've never experienced in my life. And maybe I'll go into that a bit more in the next videos. It also has to fit and things have happened where I have to think about whether I should publish them or not. I think I'll write quite openly in the book about what I've already started, but what isn't finished yet. So, by the time you see this, it'll probably be finished. First of all, I'll be honest with you. 
before I traveled, whenever someone told me about the Camino de Santiago or I saw a documentary, which was rare, I thought, hey, that's exaggerated. This is hype. And I set off with this expectation. I didn't expect anything that would introduce me to a religious life in any valid way. All I can say is don't underestimate it. Never underestimate this way, but don't expect anything from it either. I think that can be a mistake. If you have no expectations, the door will open inside you. Mm. So, there are only two doors open for me today. The one to the restaurant and the one to the dormitory. I have arrived at Pension Lemos. <sighs> Angekommen in der Pension Lemos. Berge angekommen. Ja. Um, mach nur kurz ein um, doing a little video. <laughs> Welcome. We've arrived at the Alberg. I grabbed a muesli bar from the supermarket. From the outside, the Alberg looks like a three-star hotel. We even have our own lift to take us up here. And brace yourself. We have a 12-man room all to ourselves. That's Mike. There's Mike. Hello, Mike. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> That's where I sleep. That's where Mike sleeps. And now look at this. We have really big lockers and it's all empty. All empty. Every bed is empty. We are alone here. We have a huge bathroom with huge showers all to ourselves. Für uns alleine. Und eine riesige Terrasse. And a huge terrace. There's a terrace, there's another terrace and there's laundry. My clothes are drying. And there's a lovely view of the village. Ausblick auf den Ort. Trier Castellas. Mm -hmm. I think there's a waterfall at the back. Wir sind im Restaurant und ähm, we're in the restaurant enjoying our pilgrims menu. 
Look what's on the menu. Salmon with chips and salad. Before that, we had a special Galician soup. Super tasty. With red wine, of course. So, what wine? There's Master Mike. Mike. <laughs> Hola. Hola. <laughs> Have a good night's sleep. Have a nice dream. Love you. Your daddy. Guten Abend, liebe Mitpilgernde. Wir sind hier im Hotel angekommen in Tria Castella. Good evening, fellow pilgrims. We've arrived here at the hotel, or hostel, or guest house, whatever. In any case, it's in Tria Castella. It was about 20 kilometers, and it wasn't that difficult. It was a beautiful path that led over the hilly Galician landscape with really fantastic views and lots and lots of impressions and lots of hikers. The Spaniards are still on holiday and there were a lot of Spanish groups on the way and at one point I suddenly found myself in the middle of a group who were chatting and one of them suddenly started singing arias. He just started singing with fervor and I was able to record part of it on the other camera. <laughs> And that was just another moving Camino moment. He suddenly starts singing and the others applauded and shouted bravo. Yes, and then we walked a little further. And then at some point he started singing again. He warbled the next song and he could sing. That was really great. Yes, a special moment. Yes, what you see there is Tria Castella. And here the curbs are already up at 7 a.m., which means there's nothing going on on the streets. In Germany, we say, the dog is frozen. I don't even know where all the other pilgrims are. We were also more or less alone in the restaurant. We met the French again. I met the French guys on the way, as you saw. I walked with Carlos from Spain for quite a while this morning, and there were a lot of people on the road, but I haven't seen anyone else here yet. Although the walk wasn't that hard today, it wasn't that strenuous. We're still very, very tired and we're already finishing at half past 7 p.m. We had a fantastic pilgrim's menu for just 13 euros, Galician soup, salmon and I had yogurt with fruit, plus a whole bottle of rosé. But let's keep that between us, okay? And our guest house Lemos looks like a big hotel from the outside and we have a 12-bed room all to ourselves. The overnight stay costs around 12 euros. You can't complain about that. Incidentally, we are the only guests in the whole hotel, not just in our room. The others who see the hostel from the outside probably think, oh, it's a hotel, it must be expensive, I'm not going there. Maybe they should put a sign outside. Come in everyone, we're cheap. Yes, tomorrow we'll continue in that direction. And today I was thinking about why we humans actually hurt each other again and again. These thoughts were on my mind during the day today. People hurt each other. We are sometimes very, very cruel to each other, physically or emotionally very, very cruel, and find the most adventurous ways to justify this cruelty and to consider it reasonable and right. And sometimes we do this by devaluing the suffering we produce, by not taking it seriously, by playing it down, for example. Yes, when something is perceived as very, very bad, as if your whole life is more or less destroyed, somehow destroyed. But the perpetrator then plays it down as follows. Yes, now maybe you've been lured out of your comfort zone a bit. In reality, this has nothing to do with comfort zones, but is simply a fundamentally cruel process that destroys everything that is there and leaves nothing left. But this is then completely played down. This is just one of many examples of how we humans are really treat each other with unbelievable cruelty without realizing it, without wanting to know it, and without wanting to change anything, without even considering the possibility of forgiveness. Yes, these thoughts have crossed my mind. And fittingly, a few days ago I spoke to the Australian about this topic and he had a very, very clear opinion, which was also based somewhere on Christianity, because he said, Nobody, nobody wants to be cruel. Nobody is cruel. Nobody intends to do evil. People simply don't realize that they are doing evil. They just don't know it. Or they do it out of motives of self-defense. So person A hurts person B, not to hurt them. 
to create this pain on the other side, but out of intrinsic motives. Yes, and that also made sense to me somewhere. There is the famous sentence that Jesus said to excuse his tormentors. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing. It's about being able to forgive. They don't know what they're doing and there's some truth to it somewhere, but it's super hard to accept the truth behind it. But I'm not quite at the end of my thoughts yet, either. I'm not quite there yet. But that's something that's been on my mind a lot today. Because what happens when you're hiking, or what happened on a long, long, lonely pilgrimage? Your thoughts eventually come to this pain, to what hurts inside you. You think, or I do it personally. I think about situations where I have hurt other people. And I think about how I was hurt and how you try to process or integrate that on such a long journey. And in keeping with this, I have come across animals from time to time today. Cats, but also here in Galicia, there are lots of dogs roaming around. Some of the dogs here are simply autonomous, autonomous dogs. To be honest, there are very large autonomous dogs on the streets and pavements. They are completely on their own, they live alone, they look after themselves and roam the countryside. It seems that way. I think they belong to a farm, but they are left to their own devices and take advantage of this opportunity to live a free, self-determined life. And that really impressed me today. I was walking alone on a footpath on a hiking trail and suddenly a huge dog came up to me. Really huge. A stunner. You could almost say it's a giant trotting towards me, but walking in the opposite direction to me, trotting past me as if it were simply one of the other walkers. Then he turns round at one point and looks after me with a look as if to say, Aha, du bist also ein Pilger. Aha, uh -huh, so you're a pilgrim. You just walk through the countryside here, aren't you? And with this attitude somehow, and also a slight sense of expectation, as if to say, you're a pilgrim, yes, you can give me something to eat, because I'm hungry, somehow. You haven't brought a treat? Pilgrim, all right, see you around. A dog like a cowboy. The dog as a Western movie hero. Rough, indomitable, daring. And then in the next village, Another dog came panting towards me and let me stroke him. He snuggled up to me and wanted to tell me in other words, be my friend, take me with you, please take me with you. And then he accompanied me through the whole town to the next restaurant. And then he stayed outside. Yes, those are great experiences. And Galicia itself is very green, and rain is to be expected here too. Rain is on the agenda for Wednesday. The weather forecast says there's a good chance of rain. Great! A good opportunity to use my poncho. Tomorrow we're off to Saria, a big town. And it's the last short section. I think it's only about 17 kilometers. We'll only be traveling for four hours, so very, very short, very pleasant, almost like a day's break. And I want to emphasize again at this point, I haven't taken a day's break, not a single one. I'm walking all the way to Santiago, and today is the 10th of April. We'll be in Santiago de Compostela on April the 16th. We've already booked an Airbnb. Yes, it's not that long now, and you can start to feel it. Maybe I'll have the chance to visit a service tomorrow. After that, the days will be tough again. It's always going to be over 20 kilometers, 25 or 26, because it's uphill and downhill, uphill and downhill. But the end is in sight. I think I'll sit down at the laptop for a while now, and then I'll go to bed early. Somehow I have the feeling that I need energy. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow on the way to Saria. Bye from Tria Castela. See you tomorrow. Ciao. And if we're on YouTube, then give me a thumbs up. But first you have to, this is very important. You have to click on subscribe, subscribe to this channel. Then the channel will be happy. Then the channel will jump for joy. So thank you very much for watching. See you tomorrow on the Camino Francis. By the way, I heard today that the Camino Primitivo is one of the most beautiful. Maybe I'll walk it next. When I finish in Santiago, I'll walk the Primitivo straight afterwards. 
No, that was fun. That's probably not possible. So thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.